good to be with you in God's house. Welcome to all, especially if you're a guest. We welcome you to St. Peter's, and we pray the Lord's richest blessing upon our service today. We are looking at the baptism of our Lord. Hard to believe, I say that a lot. Uh, time is flying, but last Wednesday was Epiphany, and so we are in the baptism of our Lord and the Epiphany season, in which uh, it is made known, as we remember the wise men visiting and seeing Jesus, we, uh, that Jesus isn't just for a select group, not just for the Hebrew people. He came for all people. Thanks be to God for even you and for me, for all nations. And uh, so in a sense, this for us is our Christmas season for the Gentiles. That's what we are, Gentiles, the nations. So before we begin our service today, would you do me a favor? Would you just stand up and turn around and say hi and say God's peace and welcome? opening hymn. In our opening hymn, we sing the first two verses of O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. May God bless our worship. As you're able, we rise. Our service is found on page 167 for this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence for reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the next two verses of our hymn, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. The Lord be with you. We pray together the prayer, the collect of the day. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing the last two verses of our hymn.
our Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Genesis chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6, beginning with the first verse. It also serves as our text for today's message. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise at this time for our Alleluia and verse in our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. We confess our Christian faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the mission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated at this time as I invite Josiah, our DCE, Director of Christian Education, to come forward as he will lead us in our children's lesson. Thank you, Josiah. All right, thank you, and good evening. Um, today I've got a couple props here with me, so let me grab those real quick. Uh, I've got this paper airplane, and I want you guys to imagine that this, like it says on it, it says Jesus there. So imagine that this paper airplane, when it's flying through the sky, is Jesus in his resurrection. And so it's soaring through the sky, and that's him in his resurrection from the dead. Because we remember that Jesus, he, he died on the cross for us. Uh, I think there might be some imagery of that. There's a cross here somewhere. There, there's a cross. He died on the cross for us, and then after that, he was raised from the dead. Well, that's Jesus, and he soars through the air. And when he's soaring, we'll remember that that's his resurrection. This is us, and you might not be able to see it from where you're sitting, but it's a little paper clip. Uh, and the little paper clip, it can't fly. If I let go of it, it'll just drop. And even if I tried to throw it, it wouldn't go very far. Uh, so it's not really capable of flying through the air like the paper airplane is. Uh, and in the same way, we can't be raised from the dead on our own. So that's a problem we've got. Well, in our reading today from the book of Romans, we heard that in our baptisms, we are united with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. So we are connected with God or with Jesus in his death and in his resurrection. So it would be like if we took this paper clip, which is us, and we attached it to this paper airplane, which is Jesus. And so now, even though we couldn't uh, be raised from the dead on our own, now that we've been baptized and we are connected with Jesus in his death and resurrection, we'll be raised from the dead too. And so just like that, baptism, it does make us part of his family, and it uh, forgives us from our sins, and it unites us with him in his death and his resurrection, so that we will also be raised from the dead. Uh, so why don't we say a quick prayer, thanking God for that now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus down, and that, uh, that you've given us the gift of baptism. Uh, I ask that you would help us, uh, remind us that, that we have a faith that you've given us through that baptism and that that is a, a hope that we can rely on. Help us to share the, the message of your love with the people around us so that they can also come to know and love you. I also pray in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Josiah. We continue by singing all Christians who have been baptized, verses 1 through 4, 596.
God's grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you tonight from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text for today's message is from our epistle reading read a few moments ago. I read from Romans chapter 6, once again the fourth verse of our text. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. This is our text. Please join with me in a word of prayer. We pray. Heavenly Father, we pray, be with us as we come to your house to hear your word and receive your gifts. Strengthen us in faith and the living hope that is ours in Jesus. We thank you for your many blessings given. In fact, O oh Lord, we thank you and praise you as we look especially remembering Jesus, your baptism. And we remember our baptism where we receive the gifts you won for us. I pray now that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart may ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't always do this, but I've got a couple of pictures to show you. So would you go on to the next one? Well, look at up there, all the different things, and tell me what do they have in common. I've got some on the far top left, some Gorilla Glue, or at least when I grew up, it used to be Super Glue we used to talk about. In the middle, it may be hard to see that's actually some Velcro, which is kind of interesting. If I, not only with the picture of it, but if I took some Velcro and pulled it apart, put it back together, you'd know what it is, even from the sound. Duct tape. There's a nail gun, or it could be a staple gun. Actually, that one does both. And Facebook. What do they have in common? Probably pretty easy to think about. They connect things and people together, don't they? I know as a youngster, I think I thought if I had super glue and duct tape, I could pretty much take care of anything in any situation. Velcro, that came around a little later. But isn't it kind of neat for little ones to see the Velcro shoes and things like that, putting them together a lot easier for mom and dad. And for things like staples in an office or nails in Facebook, when it's used properly, Facebook was meant and is meant to connect people, family, friends together who are distance, connecting. It's nice to hear of connecting going on, isn't it? We need that. The next one, disconnect. I think this is a word we're probably more familiar with, aren't we? Sadly. I didn't even put some pictures up there because I know in our minds there's too many pictures, not only recently, but throughout our life, that we see disconnect. We see disconnect in, in our nation, separating. We see it in our world. We see it in our families, our friends, our communities. We see it in our lives, don't we? Disconnect. And the greatest disconnect that we have is our sin. Our text spoke about that today. And God's word says very clearly about sin separate us from God and from one another. And though I like all those different things that were up there, that previous one, would you go back again? All those things might connect many things, but they cannot connect us with one another and God again. Only one can do that. Go to the next one and the following one, and that's Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I even talked about it before the service. Man, our nation, our world, we need Jesus, don't we? This world needs our Lord. He is the one who came to do exact that, exactly that to connect us back to God, to give us peace with God and one another again. And he's in the process of doing it in our text, in the gospel for today. Jesus comes, and he's baptized. Now, John was correct when John said in one of the other gospels that 
John should be baptized by Jesus, not the other way around. But Jesus does it to fulfill all righteousness, to place himself under the law for us, to fulfill all things, including placing himself and being baptized in our stead willingly as our substitute Savior and King. And the long-awaited Savior, Jesus, is the one who does it. The Holy Spirit comes upon him in the form of a dove, anointing him again, set aside. And then the voice of the Heavenly Father we hear, this is my beloved Son, this is the one you've been waiting for, who has come to reconnect us and one another with God and with one another. Jesus. The next one. Jesus. Yes. We need Jesus. This world needs Jesus. Always, every day, in every way. And the greatest way he would connect us is not only through his baptism and his life, but also his death on the cross and through the empty tomb. If you look close on the hands, you'll see the nail prints of the Lord that point him to being the one who not only died, but rose victorious from the grave that we might be his and have hope and life now and eternally. Would you go on to the next one, please? And so our epistle reading for today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, St. Paul writes how God blesses us and reconnects us, connects us to Christ and all he secured through the cross and the empty tomb. Not through the Velcro or the super glue. It's through our baptism. Baptism isn't our doing, it's what God does. And as he gives us his gifts, as he washes us, cleanses us, clothes us with his righteousness, gives us new life, and brings us into a kingdom, his kingdom, and makes us a child of God. He connects us with Jesus, both in his death and in his resurrection. As our text says, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Today, our text speaks about being connected, united through our baptism. And God is clear through Paul in baptism. God connects you, us, to Jesus, both in his death and resurrection. Now, to say that baptism connects us to Jesus is to say that prior our baptism, we were disconnected from Christ, weren't we? Scripture confirms that in no uncertain terms. In fact, Disconnected is probably an understatement, saying it mildly, probably in a positive way, as positive as you can get. In Ephesians 2, Paul describes our condition prior to Christ as being dead in our trespasses, blind of God, enemies of God. He also uses, describes us by nature as being children of wrath apart from him. In other words, by very nature, we are conceived and born and are under the wrath of God because of our sin, yours and mine. And so to say disconnected from God by our nature is definitely an understatement, isn't it? Fortunately, though, God, in his mercy and grace, is at work in baptism to connect us to Jesus once again. First, God connects us through his death in and through baptism. Paul writes, do you not know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him into death. We're so closely connected in our baptism that it's as if we are brought back to the cross almost 2,000 years ago and are there with Christ not only in the cross but in the empty tomb, but in the tomb as well, dead with him on Good Friday, and as the sun is preparing to come forward, for burial comes to a close for the day. And every time we baptize a child or an adult, God is at work joining that person, young or old, to the death of Christ. 
But it doesn't stop in the tomb, thanks be to God. In baptism, just as he buries us with Christ, so he also raises us with Christ to new life. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might walk in newness of life is something we are walking right now. Sometimes people speak of eternal life as a future fact or to come or happen when we die. But actually, eternal life began in your baptism. That's where you were given and I was given life, a life that was joined and connected to Jesus that began in time and which will go for eternity, all because of Jesus and given in our baptism. It's not something we have to wait for, for our death to experience. We have it right here, abundant and eternal life and the fulfillment in heaven, thanks be to God, and now through God's action in our lives, in our baptism. Think about that. What a contrast, not only with us, but the broken world in which we live in and the hope that it brings and the peace and the future that we have. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. And now God has raised us to new life in and through baptism. This new life is, is a life in which we are no longer live for ourselves, but for Christ who redeemed us, reconciled, reconnected us to God once again. It's a life in which we're no longer to live to gratify ourselves and our selfish desires, but rather to live to please and thank our gracious God, our awesome God. This is what Paul means when he writes, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. When we're dead to something, you don't respond to it. Just as a dead person doesn't respond to anyone or anything. So also with sin in our lives, consider ourselves dead to sin because of Jesus. And now we can see how silly and how it doesn't make sense. Paul's question at the beginning of this chapter, how it doesn't make sense at all. Paul asks, are we to continue to sin that grace may then more abound? By no means, he says. In other words, now that we are a child of God and forgiven in Jesus by his grace, by his undeserved and unmerited favor through Jesus Christ, should we sin all the more so that God can exercise his grace even more? Should we sin in abundance so that God can forgive us even more? The question, of course, is ridiculous. And Paul is making that point. It would be like asking, should I set my house on fire so that the fire department can get more practice at putting out houses? Or should I crash my car into a tree that first responders get more practice in responding to accidents? By no means, indeed. And at the same time, we know that we will not be free from sin, this side of heaven, we still have that battle within us with our new man and our sinful nature. We still are going to sin, even as we walk in this newness of life in his forgiveness and grace. The difference is we don't live in it. We live in his mercy and his love. We repent. We're sorry by God's power of our sin daily. And we daily live in that forgiveness and we remember our baptism. We remember the new life that is ours in Jesus. In baptism, in a sense, each day is a new day. Looking forward to the perfect day that is to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Luther's morning prayer, we pray, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you've kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that this day you'd keep me from sin, 
That's what we strive to do by the power of the Holy Spirit, to live for him in thankfulness to him. Yet at the same time, we understand at the end of the day, we pray, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you've kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins. But we look forward to the new day in Jesus, where that won't be anymore. And it's a new life that doesn't end that waits us when life here on earth ends for us in Jesus. Our connection with Christ and our baptism has future blessings, doesn't it? Thanks be to God, this isn't it. Thanks be to God, we have our heavenly home and the new heavens and new earth in Christ and the joy of the peace of our heavenly home. For Paul writes, for if we've been united with Christ in a death like his, we shall also certainly be united in a resurrection like his. There's more to come, thanks be to God. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, physically, bodily, raised from the grave, so will we be raised from the dead too. We shall rise because of Jesus. So will all who are connected to Christ through his resurrection, through baptism, in faith. This is the sure and certain hope that we have through Jesus, baptized children of God. Death is not the end. Death does not have the final say for you or for me or for any of his children. Death is but the doorway, the gateway into the eternal life, into the presence of God with all who have gone before us in the faith and all who will come after us. And with all those who have gone before us into the presence, together we have that same hope, those in heaven and earth, of the day of the coming of the Lord and the resurrection. The one with whom we were buried and raised to new life in our baptism will return. He won't return in meekness and in humility as he came the first time. He will come in all glory and power and majesty as Lord of lords and God of all. And on that day, our bodies will be raised just as his body was raised. And on that day, our bodies will be changed to be like his glorious body. 1 Corinthians 15 says they'll be incorruptible, imperishable, and immortal. In other words, our bodies will no longer suffer any effects from this world and sin and death in it. No arthritis, no COVID, no cancer, no high blood pressure, no strokes, no heart attacks, and our bodies will no longer be subject to death. For death itself, the penalty for sin will be no more. And on that day, all humanity, including you and me, will stand before Christ. And on that day, the books will be opened. But for all in Jesus, it's not something to fear. We can look forward to it. Our names are written in the book of life because of our baptism in Jesus. And then we will be eternally, as you are today, connected to Christ. A comfort for us and a message that needs to be shared. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the last two verses of our hymn, and the offering is brought forward at this time.
As you're able, we rise for a prayer. We pray. Heavenly Father, you have revealed your Son to us in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and the blessings to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs and children. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your holy church here and scattered throughout the world, O Lord. Give steadfast faith to all Christians by the preaching of your word and through your holy sacraments, and send labors into your harvest. Enliven the love of your saints, your people, to bear one another's burdens and to show mercy toward those outside of your kingdom, your church. Quicken, keep in us, and strengthen us in the hope of life now and eternal that is ours in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, preserve the family, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith. And preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great God, preserve our nation, its leaders, and those who serve for the good of our people and for their protection. Grant peace in our time, O Lord, for you alone fight for us, and you alone are our hope now and eternally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray that you be with those who are in need of your healing hand, blessing, strength, and care. Especially we remember Roger Reimer, Ricky Spence, William Ball, Bob Norwalk, Ivelis Rawling, Mary Schwenkoff, Louise Lang, Robert Leopold, Sally Miller, Amelia Miller, Helen Oleg, Candy Baumgart, Vicki Gerke, Roger Hansen, Emily Rogers, Jerry Petsky, Ken and Sandy Rosensky, Margaret Kruger, as well as those who have all been affected, those who have been affected by the virus, including the people of Garden Hill, Manitoba. We pray also for all health care and emergency workers caring for the sick and those in need, that according to your grace, you grant your healing, relief, strength, and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with those who mourn the death of loved ones. Especially, O Lord, we pray for your continued comfort for the family of May Vogel and all who mourn, that you, O God, would fill their hearts with certain hope of the resurrection and reunion with our loved ones who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who receive your holy body and blood in your supper today, O Lord, that they would behold their salvation in the very body and blood of our Lord, and be strengthened in faith and life and assured of the eternal life that is ours now and forevermore in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he's betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he'd given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament of my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and preserve each of you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace with great joy. Amen. As you're able, we rise as we pray our post-communion colic. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise.
good to be with each of you. The Lord's richest blessings to you in Christ, our risen Lord. Uh, just a couple announcements. Did you have any, Josiah? No. No? no? Okay. Do you want me to say something about Sunday school, that that started up again? Oh, sure. Yeah. It started up again. Speak to this guy if you have any questions about how's that sound. Um, also, Bible study tomorrow uh, after the uh, 9, 9 a.m. service uh, at 1030 online and in person or on Zoom. Uh, if you're interested in being involved with it tomorrow, uh, please uh, speak with me or email me and I'll send you the link and, uh, and love to have you part of the Bible study. Uh, we are looking at God Connects. It goes along very well with what we're talking about. And, uh, and hope to have you uh, be involved. Also, Tuesday afternoon, 1.30, we have our Bible study looking at the uh, Book of Romans. Please come and join us or uh, speak with me about it. Have a very blessed day, and God's peace be with you.